This entire UI is built in React Luau, a declarative UI framework. The UI isn't built using screen GUIs and instances, just code. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to do this in your own Roblox game. React Luo is Roblox's version of React, which is the same way used to build web apps, but for Roblox UI. This video is for developers who are already comfortable with Luo and basic UI, and want a more scalable way to build complex systems. We're not going to cover the full Roho slash Wally setup, but if you are interested in that, check out my previous tutorial videos. React is a declarative library. That means when state changes, your UI is automatically updated based on the new values. Because our UI will now be created in code, we can easily create reusable components whenever needed. In this example, the menu component is used to create two distinct menus based on the past and properties. Start by downloading the React and React Roblox packages from Wally, or by directly inserting them into Roblox Studio if you're not using VS Code. Next, we need to mount the actual React tree. So I'm going to create a function here that will essentially just create a screen GUI that we're actually going to parent all of the React instances to. After our container has been made, we have to call the React Roblox create root function and we pass in that screen GUI container. As for our actual React app, um, we will create an element and I'm just going to leave it blank for now, but we'll come back to that later. And then just call root render and pass in the app. Don't forget to actually call the mount function by just uh, calling it in a client script. You can put your UI code wherever you'd like, create the root UI module. Typically this root UI would hold all of our top level screens, but for now we're just going to do a text label as an example. So I'm going to use the react create element function and have a text label be created and pass in a couple properties here. Now that I've created that text label element, we can pass in the root UI module to that uh, mount module we made earlier. And that's actually all we need. So if you go into studio and click play, you should see our text label here that we created purely using code and using React. Amazing. If you look under your player GUI, you should see a React screen GUI there with our text label as a child. I know that was a lot of work just to make a simple text label, but I promise it gets a lot better than that. Now let's break down what the React Create Element is actually doing and uh, take it a step further. React Create Element is how elements are created. It's important to note that React Elements are not Roblox instances. React Elements are a lightweight description of a UI node, not an instance. The first parameter is the type. This can be a string, which is just pointing to a Roblox instance, or it can be a component that you define. The second parameter is a table of instance properties, which will describe how the element will look. Later, we will create components with custom properties, like scale. The third parameter, and any parameter after that, is for any children that your element may have. This could be a single element or a table of elements. It's common practice to create a variable E that is an alias for React Create Element. This ends up just making the code look a lot cleaner. Let's start our example by creating a menu component. We're going to create our alias E and create this menu function and just simply return it. Inside a menu, we're going to have a frame that uh, we're going to give a couple properties, size, anchor point, and position for now. Next, we will add children to the frame. So to do that, we're just going to create a table in the second parameter, as I stated earlier. We're going to start by adding a UI corner, as you can see here. Next, we're going to add a stroke to the frame, like this. And finally, let's add a text label. Any properties you don't fill out will just be defaulted to whatever is the default. And this is going to be our menu component. Back in our root UI script, let's use that menu component that we just created. 
And then if you hop back into Studio, you should now see our menu component that we have created using React. Now a static component isn't always the most useful, so we can add some customization to it. I'm going to create a props parameter here that we passed into the, our menu component and add a couple of properties that our menu can now accept. I'm going to define the type menu props here, like so. And then instead of hard coding exact properties, we're going to actually use our props that are then passed in and set our values to the corresponding properties. Then back when we actually use the component in our root UI, uh, we just create a property table like we do any other component, just using the properties that we just created. And then back in Studio, when we click play, you can now see that our menu is using the properties that we just defined. Now a huge benefit of declarative UI is being able to instantly load and interact with UI as it's being created without having to play the game. To do this, we need to install a Storybook plugin. Most people use UI Labs, so start by downloading the UI Labs plugin from the Toolbox in Studio. Then we need to create a story script for the plugin to load from. In their simplest form, stories are simply a function that does some action, which then returns a cleanup function. In this example, let's create the React root and then return a cleanup function which unmounts the root. The storybook plugin will automatically pass in the parent to this function, so that's why we put it as the first parameter here. Then back in Studio, open the UI Labs plugin and select the story we just created. Now our React UI will be created and updated in real time. We can add a new property for position to our menu props here and set it in our actual component. And again, it's being automatically updated. To create multiple menus, we can simply pass in a table of menus rather than just returning one menu. And we can individually change their properties to make them unique. It's worth noting that generally you don't want to just return a plain table. You actually want to wrap it inside of a React fragment you probably won't have issues just returning a table, although using the React fragment is the correct way to do this. Now that building UI visuals has been covered, let's introduce state into the system. Simple Luau values are not enough when using a declarative approach. So React has its own state system, using the useState hook. useState returns two variables, the first being the raw value, and the second being a function used to update the value. The initial value should also be passed in as the function's parameter. Let's create a simple counter using React state. I'll start by creating a counter and set counter variables with an initial condition of zero. An incrementer function has been created which utilizes set counter by adding one to the current count. Then we need to create our actual UI element Notice how we directly set the text to counter. Finally, we hook up the activated event to the increment function. Let's try and visualize this now. On screen, there is the white text button and our counter variable. When the activated event is fired, the increment counter function will then be called, which then is calling the set counter function, which internally causes a re-render in the React node. This will cause the text to be updated to the new counter variable. Now let's code the counter state into our menu component. I'm going to create the counter and set counter variables by using react use state. And then I'm going to create this text button here and use the counter variable within the text. And then instead of making a dedicated function just for incrementing, I'm just going to directly write it in the element itself. And then if we go back to Studio and look at our UI labs, you'll now see that we have our buttons working that are counting and keeping track of state. Sometimes a component needs to do something outside of rendering, like connecting to an event 
starting a timer, or listening to game state. That's where use effect comes in. Use effect lets you run code after React updates the UI and clean it up when the component changes or unmounts. The first parameter is a function. Inside this function, you can do pretty much whatever you want. You can subscribe to an event, start a timer, really whatever. Typically, these operations come with some kind of cleanup needed. So within this function, you actually return another function that does the cleanup operations. Additionally, use effect takes a second parameter. This parameter is any state dependencies that the effect may use. So if our use effect uses some state that's defined outside of it, then we must pass it into the dependency array. If the use effect does not have any state dependencies, then we can just simply use a blank table. If no dependency array is defined, then every re-render, the use effect will be called again, which is not what you would want. Now let's use effect in a real example. So back in our menu component, I'm going to, instead of just returning the menu, I'm going to create a function that will decide if the menu should show or not. So I'm going to create the state shown, and then I'm going to use the react use effect and listen to when the F key is pressed on the keyboard. When the F key is pressed, we are going to set shown to whatever the opposite of it is. So it'll just toggle it on or off. And since this is a connection, we need to make sure that we clean it up. So I'm going to clean it up in the return function. And then using that shown state that we have before, we are just going to conditionally create the menu component by just using an if statement. And now back in studio, you can see I can toggle it on and off by just pressing F. At this point, you have the basic React tools needed to create UI. There are, however, a couple more topics to cover to fully utilize React's full potential in a real game setting. Refs can be used to store values that are completely irrelevant to the React rendering cycle. The parameter passed in to the use ref hook is simply the initial condition. The ref variable returned is simply a table that has a dot current property. Refs are especially useful because you can store the actual instance that React is creating. Let's create a text box ref here. And then in the property table, there is a special key that's just ref that you can use to have a reference of the actual instance. Then we can use the ref however we'd like to call something like capture focus in this example or any other event or property or really whatever that is needed. If something needs to update often, like an animation, React state should not be used. Instead, use bindings. Bindings allow subscribe properties to be directly updated without needing a React re-render. Similarly to use state, React use binding returns two values. One is a special binding value, and the other is to set the value. And we pass in the initial condition into the function. In order to read the value from the binding, we use the getValue function. In this example, let's create a rotation binding, and I'm simply going to use effect here where I will increment the rotation every frame. If we use state instead of binding here, this would be quite an expensive operation as it would cause re-renders every frame when bindings will not. And then we can simply just use the rot binding in the rotation property inside of this image label. Now this image would be constantly spinning. Bindings are incredibly useful when it comes to animations. I personally highly recommend using Ripple for any tween or spring animations needed. They have ready to go examples and hooks for React usage. So far, all of our state has lived inside of React components. That works great for UI specific things, like whether a menu is open, which tab is selected, or what item is being highlighted. But in a real Roblox game, a lot of important state doesn't necessarily belong to the UI at all. For example, how many coins you have, which items are in your inventory, and player-specific settings. This is where external state comes in. If the state only affects how UI looks or behaves locally, it belongs in React. If it represents actual game data, it's external state. In my own projects, I usually keep game state in an external reactive store. For example, I use a library called Charm. Libraries like this let you define game state once, and then have React components subscribe to it. I'll leave a link to Charm's documentation in the description. And that's a high level look at how React Lua works in Roblox. We've covered how components describe UI, how state and effects work, and how everything fits together in a real project. Hopefully this gives you a solid starting point and enough context to explore React Luo on your own. Thanks for watching.